Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is very exciting. We're gonna be trying something that I have never used on this channel before. It's also something that I just don't have a lot of experience with in general, and that is ink. And not just any ink, but the beautiful Ferris Wheel Press inks. So Ferris Wheel Press kindly sent me these three beautiful new inks to try. I have never tried their products before, but I was very happy to find out that they are a Canadian brand. If you don't know, I am a Canadian. I am based in Ontario, Canada, and I went to school in Toronto. And that is where Ferris Wheel Press is located, Toronto, and they're designed and made in Canada. And I really love that each ink has a beautifully designed box. Like each box has its own illustration specifically for that color. So we've got Malibu blush, and then we have Cabernet on the lake. So this is a beautiful burgundy red color. And then we have, this one's very special. It's called Bookkeeper's Brass. And as you can see here, there's Japanese. And that is because I believe this is Yes, this is a collaboration with a Japanese bookstore, Sutaya Books. So I love the box. That is really cool. So I believe these two have glitter in them and I think this one does not have glitter. So I don't work with a lot of glittery art supplies. It's not usually my thing, but I am excited to give these a try. And I think this is the one I'm most excited about. The color is just so beautiful. Oh, you can see all of the gold iridescence glitter on the side. And then it's a very deep sepia colored ink. Something else about me is that I am a big book nerd and I've actually read a fair bit of Japanese literature. So this collab is really cool to me. All right, so let's give these guys a shake and let's swatch them in my sketchbook. Okay, I'm gonna start with Malibu blush the non-shimmery one. And I'm using my above ground 40th anniversary brush, watercolor brush, which is very fitting because it is a Toronto art store. We're really supporting Toronto brands today. <laughs> it's a really gorgeous pink. Should I try my dip pen? So to be completely honest, this is my first time using a dip pen. So it might be a total fail. Oh, it does work. All right, let's get into the shimmery colors. We'll start with Cabernet on the lake. I don't know if you can fully see the shimmery effect, but it's really beautiful. It's got like a subtle gold shimmer. Here is Bookkeeper's Brass. So there are the three ink colors and they actually make a beautiful palette. So because ink is an entirely new medium for me, it's a whole new beast. I wanted to start with a bit of a game plan, you know, gather some inspiration, see how other artists are using the medium and just basically not go in totally blind. And the tool I've been using to do this is actually the lovely sponsor of today's video. Milano. Milano is a tool for organizing your creative projects. I've been using Milano to put all of my ink inspiration in one easy to read place. It's perfect for visual thinkers like myself because it allows you to organize your ideas in a way that makes sense to you. So this is my main project board. I've linked to a couple ink painting YouTube videos that really helped me understand ink's unique properties and how they act. I also have my color palette of inks and the ability to create color palettes is one of my favorite features. I think it's so useful for artists. I can definitely see myself using this to plan out future paintings with limited color palettes. 
So here I have my inspiration subboard, and you can make countless subboards to organize your thoughts in any way that makes sense to you. Here I have compiled a bunch of inspiration for how I'd like to approach ink painting. A lot of these are watercolor paintings because that is how I'm planning to use the inks, but I really want to explore inks unique qualities as well. I want to find a balance between structured and loose, and Mila Note makes it so easy to organize all of these ideas in a visual way that is easy to see at a glance. In your boards and subboards, you can collect notes, images, videos, tasks, and more all in one place. Whether you are a writer, an interior designer, or an artist like me, Mila Note makes starting a new project easy with over 100 built-in templates available for every type of creative project. And the best part is Mila Note is completely free with no time limit. So you can sign up now using the link in the description and start your next creative project. Okay, so time to get painting. I wanted to start off with a cat, which I know, big surprise. But when you look up ink painting, there are surprisingly lots of cat paintings. I saw many paintings where they use an ink bloom effect for a fluffy tail, and I just really love painting cats, so I thought it would be a great, not so intimidating place to start. It is more of a cat portrait though, so no fluffy tail. In one of the videos I watched in my research, she demonstrated the two ways to create an ink bleed in ink painting. The first one is by putting a wet patch down and then dropping or placing ink in that area. And the second way is by painting an area with the ink and then adding a patch of water beside it. And the ink naturally wants to bleed into the new wet area. So I wanted to try both of these techniques in this first painting. I stick to the Bookkeeper's Brass and the Malibu Blush for this one. I really wanted to see how those colors would look together. I don't think I've ever used a color palette quite like this, but I really, really love it. In my inspiration board, I was also looking at paintings that used wet-on-wet -wet techniques and paintings that looked like they were created more with layers, you know, and waiting for each layer to dry before adding the next. And I found that I really liked it when these two techniques were used together because I really like the way it looks when you have a variety of soft edges and hard edges. I think it just makes for a more interesting painting. It allows you to make areas of interest. I think when there's too many hard edges or it's just all soft edges, our eyes don't really have any place to land and we don't really want to spend time looking at the piece as much. So this combination of techniques was my goal in all of these little paintings. I really loved how this cat turned out. I was pleasantly surprised that the shimmery ink wasn't over the top glittery in the end. It's a lot more subtle than these swatches. So I wanted to use Cabernet on the lake in the next painting, and I decided to do a fish. I figured it was a subject that would let me go even crazier with the wet on wet technique. So I started with that lovely burgundy color, and then I went in with some of the pink Malibu blush and then I ended up going over the whole thing in a flat wash of bookkeepers brass about halfway through and I discovered that I love how this looks. It takes everything you've done so far and it softens it so that once it's dry you can keep adding layers to bring out certain shapes and details. I was kind of scared to add that big wash of color I felt like it was a risk, but I think it paid off. This one, I thought I would be brave and bring out the dip pen. 
I actually wasn't sure I would use that pen at all because I'm not so much of a line girl. I'm more of a shape artist. I like to construct my images out of shapes of color rather than out of lines, if that makes sense. But if you remember in my last video, I talked about using colored pencils to bring out certain edges and shapes in my alcohol marker portraits. So I end up doing sort of the same thing with the dip pen at the end of these ink paintings, and I really love the look it gives. So after my found confidence with the fish painting, I wanted to make the cat feel more full and cohesive. So I went back in and I actually think I made the painting better, which is so rare for me. Usually when I go back into something, it's not good. I end up overworking it and ruining the whole thing. But for once, that wasn't the case. I did a wash over the whole thing because I really liked how that worked on the fish. And then I brought back in some areas of interest. And I also added a teeny bit of the Cabernet on the lake. I think the wash really improved the painting because it pushed some of those hard edges and shapes back a bit so that they aren't competing with the eyes of the cat, which in my mind are the, the stars of the show. <laughs> and I finished the cat sketch with the dip pen again and I really like how it ended up looking. I don't know, maybe you can flip back and forward in the video, but I think it looks better. So I was trying to think of what to paint next, and I ended up deciding on a bumblebee because I thought those ink bleed effects would be perfect for capturing the fur. So for this one, I wanted to try starting with a flat wash of color as a background. I like how it looked, but I almost prefer doing it in the middle of the painting. I think it gives it a very misty, dreamy look that I really enjoy. But that's what a sketchbook is for, just trying new things. And especially with the new medium, you just sort of have to feel it out and get acquainted with its properties and how it's gonna act when you do certain things. The bee didn't end up being my favorite, but I still think it's a cute little sketch. I felt like I needed one more thing on the page to round it out. For this one, I wanted to try doing layers where I allow the colors to mix. And by the time I got to these mushrooms, I felt so much more confident with these inks. Going into this video, I really wasn't sure if I'd end up liking painting with inks. It felt really new and scary to me, even if that sounds kind of silly. I think I just thought that they'd be similar to watercolors, but harder and less forgiving. And I don't think that's true. They definitely have similar properties to watercolor, but they really do feel like their own thing, and they act in their own unpredictable ways. I really love the wide variety of values you can get with ink. You can get super, super dark with it, but you can also do really light washes. And that's another thing, is that you can get very smooth, flat washes, but with the shimmery colors especially, you can get some really beautiful granulation and bloom effects. 
I'm really happy I was able to try these Ferris wheel press inks. They are absolutely beautiful. On Instagram, I see that they're mostly used for writing and calligraphy, but I think more people should try painting with them. I don't see a lot of artists painting with ink in general, and when you do, it's usually black ink, like India ink. I don't see a lot of people painting with colored inks like these, but maybe I'm just not looking in the right places. I think this medium has so much potential, and it deserves a lot more attention, in my opinion. I'm really looking forward to doing more ink paintings. I'd love to attempt a portrait. I didn't think I was quite ready to tackle a portrait in this video, but now I'm really itching to do one. I also really want to expand my Ferris Wheel Press ink collection now. <laughs> they just make the most beautiful colors. I saw that they have some calligraphy inks that are opaque, so those really piqued my interest. But yes, I really love this color palette. I think the Bookkeeper's Brass is still my favorite of the three. Let me know what you think down below. I'd love to know if you've tried painting with ink or if it's something you would consider trying. Thank you to Milanote for sponsoring today's video and thank you to my patrons on Patreon and my YouTube channel members. I really appreciate the support and I believe when this video is going up, my sketchbook scans for March will be posted on Patreon for my Sketchbook Pals tier, so that's always exciting. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you all soon. Bye bye